been a lot of conditioning on a futurist view of Jesus coming again in a particular way. Um, obviously, in my latest book, where I've talked about the eschatology, the restoration of all things, I go into the second coming in a huge lot of detail. You know, it's probably that chapter is a big chapter because I go into the meaning of the words that relate to the imminence of that coming of Jesus, the nature of the context of his coming in the old, ending the old covenant and bringing the new and in the generation that Jesus said it was going to take place, which was that current generation that they would see him um, and then go into the physical manifestations that they did see during the siege of jerusalem in AD 66 to 70 when he did come before the final end of the old covenant when the temple was destroyed as jesus prophesied would happen in matthew 24 and he said also all of these things the tribulation of those days would be fulfilled and never fulfilled again so we we've sort of been conditioned into this well, Jesus is going to come back on earth because the same teaching about the rapture, about the second coming and the church being taken out of the way is also a wrong teaching about Zionism in which then there's two peoples of God. There's an earthly people, the Jews, and there's a heavenly people, the Christians. Well, there isn't. There's only one people of God. Those are those who have faith in Jesus. And Jesus, Paul said that there's only one new man in Christ. There are no Jew nor Gentiles. So we've recreated a division between the old and the new covenant rather than Jesus fulfilling the new covenant, the old covenant in the new and fulfilling all the promises of God to a wrong theology that Jesus has to come back on earth to fulfill the old covenant promises to Israel. When the, all those old covenant promises to Israel are fulfilled as promises to the people of God, the church. And Paul called the people of God, the Israel of God. Because he was trying to show them that there aren't two peoples, so there's just one. But the wrong teaching about the end times has placed the end times in the future. That wrong teaching primarily came about, you know, through the Brethren movement in the 1820s. And they created three distinct theologies, which were based around one idea of dispensationalism. That was rapture, millennialism and Zionism. And all those three things come from the same root and they're all wrong. You know, they're all actually just religious deceptions, um, which have led to this whole idea that Jesus is coming back to earth because he's got to go to Jerusalem because he's got to set up the temple and he's got to have sacrifices again because the old covenant needs to be fulfilled. Well, Jesus fulfilled it. The new covenant is written on hearts, not tablets of stone. So it's already fulfilled. Jesus came to finally end the old covenant age by giving them a generation to turn and follow him to which some did of course you know in their droves uh, but there were still a lot who didn't and were still following their old religious process of sacrifices and offerings and everything else thinking that they could fulfill the law you know but jesus came to end he fulfilled the law so we don't have to fulfill it you know, so the second coming um is not a future event it's already happened and that's why it was imminent you know the book of revelation which was port where john was talking about what would happen in the end of that generation it was a these things are soon to take place the word mellow which is translated in most english versions shall actually means about to there's a huge difference well jesus shall return to jesus is about to return because that puts it in the generation he said he would return and there is lots of physical evidence that Jesus returned in the writings of a Christian historian, Eusebius, a Roman historian, Tacitus, and a Jewish historian, Josephus. And they wrote the signs that were seen in the sky over Jerusalem, armies seen, angels, the presence of God leaving the temple. I mean, there were so many things that are actually written in historical records. Well, most people don't know that so they're not aware of it well i have placed all those things in the book and i also gave 20 i think 86 um day of the lord uh scriptures which were fulfilled in that day so jesus said that the day of resurrection and the day of judgment would be the last day well that was the last day of the old covenant uh, not the last day of the world 
because where it talks about the end of the world it, it isn't it's the end of the age the word is eon where we get our word eon from inyos which is age nothing to do with world you know so we've in english we've got a lot of mistranslations unfortunately around because the translators have come from that theological perspective so jesus said or the the those that saw jesus go up into the clouds of witnesses go to go back into heaven they said you will see jesus come in like manner not they didn't say you'll see him come and step on the earth but he will come with the clouds he will come with the cloud of witnesses so that's what he did so jesus came in the same like manner he didn't come back to earth he doesn't need to come back to earth because we're here on earth and ultimately the heavens and the earth will be restored back to its original relationship so everything will be back as it should have been so jesus they didn't say jesus was going to step on the mount of olives or stay on jerusalem or come back that way that's a reading into the book of zechariah things which are not relating to jesus's second coming but his first coming uh, and, and that's been again misinterpreted um, to make it in the future so no jesus is not going to come back in that way to end the old covenant that's a once for only event and it's happened does jesus come he comes all the time he comes and engage with us he comes in our meetings and engage with us he comes and meets people he comes in so his coming is a continual thing yeah and when we come and engage someone he comes in us to engage someone so there's lots of different perspectives to that being an ongoing thing but not as a second coming rapture event that he's going to take the church out and leave everyone else behind no essentially the church were they left jerusalem as jesus warned them to when you see these signs armies coming to surround jerusalem run to the hills don't even stop to get your coat get out quickly now historical record is that every christian left jerusalem and went to the hill country of pella before jerusalem was besieged none of them were were, were left there because they knew what jesus meant he didn't mean that he, they had to wait two thousand years later for that event you know because it didn't make any sense because it was an imminent event you know and actually if it was talking about the world coming to an end well how could fleeing to the hills in jerusalem save the world no everyone's going to come to jerusalem and run to the hills so in a sense you know he wasn't talking about the world it was talking about the land the end of the age um that was for the end of that covenant and jesus came ended that covenant fully introduced the new covenant all that you know it talks about in hebrews that the old covenant became obsolete faded away and then finally ended and that was judgment wasn't on people the judgment was on the system you cannot follow the old covenant system and live by grace which is why there's such mixing of covenants which has basically drawn people into trying to perform and be good enough for god when we're saved by grace not works you know so hopefully that'll give you a little bit of insight but if you if you want to go deeper into it you know you get my book and read it um you can get it as a ebook on our website um or a hard copy that does go into it in great detail you get all the verses all the all the records of what happened in those days um the historical records plus all the all the words that point to the fact that it was in that generation and that that coming the parousia as it says was his presence there not come coming in the future but his presence and there's a mistaking i uh, understanding in his presence and coming very different things you come and you're present so parousia was the coming of a king who was then present well jesus is present in us he's present in the world in us and through us so there's no need for a physical manifestation of his coming we are his physical body here on earth if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much